Welcome in to episode 93 of About the Cards podcast live tonight on YouTube. As always, with me, host Stefan Loeffler at Junkwax Twins, Ben Wilson at our trading cards, and I'm Tim Shepard at Big Shep 79. We are a podcast by collectors for collectors. I'm going to bring you a smart, insightful podcast discussing trading card collecting. We're live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific on YouTube, Periscope, and Facebook Live. Check us out on Breakers TV uh, and Twitch. You can always follow us at on Twitter at About the Cards. We're available as a podcast everywhere. Check out our website about the cards.wordpress.com. We've had a ton of new reviews uploaded of product over the last uh, over the fall and winter time. And uh, check it out. We're gonna have a great, we have a sweet giveaway, tremendous giveaway uh, available at the end of the show. So check it out. Or if you listen to the podcast, just fast forward and listen then and come back and listen to the rest of us. So what's up, fellas? Another week quarantined away. How are we all doing? Uh, well, sorry, I was finishing my match here. I don't even know, what are you playing there? Fortnite. Is that for wrestling on the regular Nintendo? I love that game. <laughs> no, no, but that is on there. Uh, no, no, uh, I, I didn't do a mail day, but uh, I've had a lot of packages come in the mail. Um, and outside of that, uh, just trying to kill time. Trying yep. to work. Ben and I both did some mail days uh, this week, uh, which were pretty fun. I did a quick one today about some new – I did one on just Periscope about uh, some new boxes I found uh, from Phil Hughes mm. and uh, he found on Amazon. So, Ben, how's your week been, buddy? Yeah, it's been fun, man. I uh, had, had a blast. Um, last Thursday, I got to sit in for about an hour with Dr. James Beckett recording a couple of shows for his podcast, Sports Card Insights. Um you know, we'll talk about a bucket list item. That was pretty friggin' neat. And uh, um, his first disclaimer before we even started was no mention <laughs> of, of the Maguire because he'd already covered it on a previous podcast. We discussed it on the Hobby Hotline. And he's like, now, the first one was an origin story. He goes, if you want to mention it within the context of uh, being becoming an A's collector, you're welcome to. But uh, we're not arguing that today. So, but it was fun. The first of the two have dropped already. And, uh, you can go check it out. His podcasts are awesome because yeah. they, they are short and, uh, you know, so much insider knowledge. Yeah. And when I say insider, just, you know, because he's been with the hobby for so long and has just so much stored information in his head. Uh, I felt like I could have talked to him for days on one topic, let alone all of the topics at our disposal. Certainly. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Well, outstanding. So check that out. Uh, we have a little bit of sad news leading off uh, tonight. Tigers legend, Hall of Famer Al Kaline, he passed away at 85 uh, Monday. The Hall of Famer um, passed away in Michigan. He, he spent his entire 22-year career uh, with the Tigers, which is from 53 to 74. He was known as Mr. Tiger. He hit, hit a career average of 297 with 399 home runs, uh, almost 1,600 RBIs, over 1,600 runs scored, and seven hits over 3,000. So he's one home run short of 400 and three percentage points away from 300 batting average for a career. Pretty awesome. He's an 18-time All-Star. He's a 10-time Gold Glove winner. He won the batting title in 55, and he won a World Series in 68. And uh, he was inducted in the Hall of Fame in 1980. So so two things worth noting here. Although, although his batting average is just under 300, and yeah, sure, his home runs – Literally one under 400, but he had over 3,000 hits, seven over, and two, at least according to Wiki, uh, he's been married to the same lady since 1954. Yeah. Had, had been, obviously. So uh, he was, he. you know what, I always liked his name because it looked like Alkaline. Right. You know, like uh, Alkaline Batteries. Mm -hmm. I, understand, I don't understand why he never had his own batteries. Or a battery giveaway at the stadium, you know. But uh, no, it's uh, you know, eighty-five though. It's a good long life, um, you know. So we also lost Tommy Dempsey, the New Orleans Saints kicker that had the flat foot that had the longest field goal in NFL history, uh, and as well as Hall of Fame football player Bobby Mitchell of the Redskins fame. He was mm -hmm. one of the first, he was the first player to integrate the Washington Redskins, and he he passed away as well. Uh, Dempsey passed away from complications due to the coronavirus nineteen virus. The others were battling other ailments. Mm. We'll hop in the week that was last week's release. There's not much there, but Topps Living Elite, week 108. Edward, uh, card 299, Eduardo Rodriguez, pitcher of the Boston Red Sox. 
and was too shy of 2,500. And card 300, Willie Mays, Hall of Fame outfielder for the New York Giants, was uh, a few short of 4,800. Did not crack 5,000, which is somewhat disappointing for Willie, I believe. And I want to know what you guys' quick thoughts are on that one. Well, first, here's what they look like, just as a refresher course. Yeah. You got uh, Will Willie there. The young Willie, too. Very. It certainly looks like it would almost go on that 53 cops card yeah. had he been issued one. Um, and Eduardo Rodriguez. Uh, no, no, good cards. Uh, really kind of surprised, like you'd said, um, on Willie's uh, final total. I thought for sure maybe he'd crack five. Yeah. I was I was a little disappointed he didn't hit five. I think that Eduardo Rodriguez got a little bit of a bump because the checklist was also included. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, um, our friend uh, Tops Livingstad had made an interesting observation um, that he felt Willie Mays was probably held down a little bit and Rodriguez was pumped up a little bit due to the inclusion of the checklist. That a lot of people probably bought the bundle as opposed yeah. to buying one or the other. And if the checklist wasn't included as part of the deal, um, Will, Willie Mays probably was bought more on the secondary market mm -hmm. uh, and probably not directly from tops. Thus, Rodriguez is probably in the 1900 range and Mays probably does hit, you know, five grand, 5,200. Yeah, and we didn't mention the checklist last week. I think it sold just over 2,100 copies uh, there. So... Um, that's my bad. I uh, didn't see that it was really should, should have known it with the card number 300. So, uh, we also had 1920 Panini Select Hobby Hybrid Basketball Drop. And then we talked a lot about Project Tops Project 2020. Uh, if you want to go in more in depth on some of those, uh, we will later in the show. Um, some of the stuff that's dropped there, but um, we uh, hit it pretty good on the Hobby Hotline this weekend on Saturday. So, uh, check that one out. I was on there with uh, Eric Norton of uh beckett and john newman of sports card nation it was a good show it was nice to have eric on and there's a giveaway uh in that show that we're going to be doing away on saturday so go back listen to the show uh, eric has an awesome hockey giveaway and uh real simple real easy way to earn it but uh, you guys got to go listen you can even listen to the podcast version and and, and follow it there so that was fun uh hot off the press is this week's new releases cops living week 109 card 103 301 Mookie Betts outfielder Los Angeles Dodgers and card two or 302 David Dahl outfielder Colorado Rockies. We have an all NL West all outfielder week. It's interesting. I think Betts is the first player to actually have a card done without him actually wearing the hat or the, the, the you know, without him, uh, you know, because that's that's not, um, unless it's from spring training photo, possibly. Is the only thing I can think of, possibly, but um, you know, it's well, a good-looking card because of the All Star logo. Because they're supposedly supposed to have the All Star game in LA this year, but uh, you know, I doubt that's happening. <laughs> so, the, the, that's the interesting thing too is that um, you, you know, since his trade, I, I don't think he had a Red Sox tops living. No. no. So now Red Sox fans don't get one. Now, I'm sure they were probably planning to release him around the 300 number, but they probably weren't expecting the huge offseason trade. And then David Dahl's yeah. like staring off and just dreaming. He's That's dreaming right. of Aaron, Nolan Arenado. He's dreaming, dreaming of a baseball season. Yeah. We also lost Bill Weathers, Withers this week, too, man. Yeah. We did. A lot of people. A lot of people. And then uh, there was a, another gentleman that passed away, a country music star. So, and then the, I, his name just fell out of my head. And I know that, that Bo uh, Booby will get mad at me for, for not mentioning that. Uh, but no, just an interesting week. I, I no rookie. And this is the first week uh, in this new year that we've not had a rookie and or Hall of Famer. We had two current players. I think Betts will do okay. David Dahl, eh, you know, he was supposed to – he was with a, he had, his name as a prospect was really big, and he's kind of come up and just been eh. an outfielder. Uh, check out at Tops Living Staff for full breakdown of where these cards fall, respectively, and set by team and by position. Panini Flawless 2019 Panini Flawless football drop today $2,600 a box, one pack per box, 10 cards per pack. Uh, you're going to get six autographs, uh, what two to three mems, and one to two gem cards. Um, 
I also know there's also one blockchain redemption per box. Um, but per from what I've heard, it sounds like those are the digital versions only, but nothing I've been told is 100% there. Um, there's 130 cards in the set, all numbered to 20, the base cards. Uh, or the the uh, well the, the card well, what they call consider base cards. Uh, it's a super premium product. Uh, autographs are on card. There's premium swatches, gym cards. Uh, all the card none of the cards are numbered higher than 25 in the entire run. There's a dual autographs that um, make their debut this season, um, pairing a uh, mix of pre uh, present and past players. So there's Zeke and Emmett on a card which is pretty cool if you're a Cowboys collector. Uh, there's seal, there's the NFL Shield signatures. Those are all one-of-ones. So, again, uh, this got pushed back a week due to the fact that, you know, they had National Treasures drop and then this, so they gave it a week. Um, and those are two of the biggest football products of all year. So there's also some Super, million, Super Bowl uh, swatches in this release. So it would Jane, be cool. It featured the jersey, but obviously that's implausible with Peyton Manning and some of the other tier yeah. players that people would want. But James said to give uh, David Dahl a heart uh, an, uh, an easy time because he hurt his he lost a spleen after outfield collision. Oof. I just I mean he just didn't he's not what he was supposed to be. That's all you know. That's all I was saying. So. Uh, and then also this week we have 2020 Tops Tribute Baseball dropping Friday, $350 a box, six packs per box, three cards per pack, three autos and three additional autos and or MIM cards in there. Uh, it's the first premium baseball release of the season. Tribute tandem autograph books. Those are numbered out of 25. They're going to have two signatures on them from uh, players, one veteran and one star. They have a similar trait, so they're going to share something in common there. 2020 Tops Tribute also has – uh, a couple of new autographed inserts, which both are case hits. So there's a franchise best autographs and greatest hitters autographs. And those are all numbered out of 99 or less. Um, there's also cool when the career tribute uh, achievement award autograph set continues. This is the third year for that. The first two years, it was Sandy Koufax in 18, Hank Aaron in 19. This year, it's the first time they're doing an active player. And of course, it's Mike Trout. Those cards are all numbered one of one. I've always really enjoyed. I like tribute. Their base cards are thick base cards, so they're they're cool. Um, tributes. Um, it, it, it's kind of lost its luster, I think, over the last couple of years. But it's still a good looking card. And if you like, if you're like a team collector, like the the nerds that we are, I have a Sal Perez. I think it's his uh, second or third year in the league, and I have a tribute autograph that I picked up for like three dollars. It's a beautiful card with a great signature. And for three bucks, like, that's what you pay for a Series 1 autograph. Um, and so I was like, yeah. And so I, it's just that thicker card stock. It has a quality look to it. They always have good imagery. I just think people, there's so much other stuff that Tops has done that made Tribute kind of look like, eh, also ran at this point. What are you guys' thoughts? Well, I, it, one, is it really the first uh, premium release of the year with Inception already out? Are, are those on a different tier? I, I, I'm, I've, I'm, I've obviously never purchased either box. Uh, that, that's just classification purposes. Question. Yeah, uh, I think I just think based on what because Bo the tops Inception is more geared towards the rookies than the young guys. Mm -hmm. This is going to have that, but this is also going to have those retired stars in there. You're gotcha. not going to get. You, you know, you're not going to get a, a Mike Schmidt autograph and in, in, in Tops Inception, but, you know, he might be in Tribute. Gotcha. So. Yeah, there's so, there's so much of this. You see, when, when I got back into the hobby around 2010, Tribute was considered, along with Triple Threads, a higher-end product. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, for a few years thereafter, Tribute was, was still towards the top. But then along came Museum Collection, and obviously so many other products that just put this into i don't even know if it's considered a high end product anymore because of the inflated prices of all of the you know the base products once you fi factor in flagship and 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 bowman and heritage and all of these other ones tributes kind of regressed to the the just the norm now it's just yeah, what, what you're expecting yeah, I would say like you, you know, you have like opening day and big league and stickers, and then it kind of goes to flagship and like the Bowman and the Heritage products, Ginter, and then 
Gypsy, then you, yeah, the Gypsy and, and Alan and Ginter. And then you have uh, another little step up from that is Tribute and Triple Threads. And then you get into like Dynasty and some of their other really high end stuff. Transcendent. Um, yeah, yeah. Transcendent. <laughs> you're, you're kind of seeing Tribute get that, that gap between, again, let's go back to 2010, 2011, 2012 for just a moment. You know, the gap between Flagship and Ginter and, and Heritage and what they were at that time versus now. You yeah. know, Crops Chrome was a high a higher end of that group being, you know, at like 95 bucks a box when, um, you know, Flagship could be had for 60, 70 bucks. Uh, and then you jumped into Tribute and Triple Threads, which were a couple hundred bucks, like right around the $200 mark if you're buying the entire thing and not just an inner. Um, but, but now everything's kind of caught up and it's just, it's just a, a hit laden, yeah. you, know, you know, top heavy, uh, but it's still nice. I, I really enjoy tribute. It's much nicer to me than museum collection is. And uh, it's got solid parallels, you know, most every year, the colors are really nice. Um, no, so yeah, know, it just, it just kind of lost a little bit of its luster, I think, but so it's still deep. A, a late addition to the party. Our producer uh, shot me a message here and he said, it's not the exact photo, but there's him wearing the uh, all-star game hat. Okay. So what's from spring uh, training? So it's not a Photoshop then? No. That's gotcha. good. Yeah. That's good. Uh, make sure to check out Ryan Cracknell's articles on Becca.com slash news for more details on all these new releases. The checklist was not available um, as we came live tonight for tribute. So I don't have all the details there. Um, so I mean, those will probably be up hopefully tomorrow, uh, if not Friday morning. What's brewing next week's releases? Tops 2020 sticker MLB collection will be out. 2020 Tops XFL football and 1920 Upper, upper Deck Opeachy Platinum Hockey all drop next week. Now, I know, Ben, we talked about the pre-show. Top stickers was supposed to come out two weeks ago on the first. Um, it got pushed back to next, last week, and then it, I, I looked at it's blow up this morning, and then they said it was getting pushed back to next week. But you found and picked up a handful uh, online already. I noticed Beckett doesn't have a checklist, but cardboard use a par- cardboard connection has a partial checklist for right. stickers, right? right. Yeah, so. it, it looks like the base card set is going to have 237 cards, and then it looks like the first 200 or 200 are going to have uh, solid base backs to them that are going to be mm-hmm. like like you know the sticker will be on top of it. Um, they did that last year as well. They kind of changed up the the way that they released this uh, in 2019. Um, so yeah, the, the traditional, you know, stickers are already, um, that checklist is out on cardboard connection only, uh, at the moment and quite a few of them are popping. I, I found a seller that, um, already had most of the, the first 200, uh, you know, listed, I uh, had multiple quantities of each. He's already, you know, I, I bought the five A's that were on that. Um, you know, so they're fairly inexpensive right now if you, if that's your, your cup of tea, but it's interesting that it got pushed back again because some of this is already being seen in the wild. Yeah, no, and it can be because a lot of the times, too, with stickers is that um, it's it hits retail, mm-hmm. so that it just kind of gets put out. So right. that could be the situation there. And, and so we're just trying to give you the most accurate information. I mean, it was supposed to come out two weeks ago, so there's a good chance it's out there somewhere. So And, and you know, aside from Cracknell, the, the best place to pull it is uh, you know, Cardboard Connection or Tops.com directly, but uh, – Where's the stickers checklist? Guys, thanks, Benini. I'm not on there, but Utz was. <clears throat> Utz. Yeah. Uh, we'll hop in there. And for any of you guys out there that, oh, I was going to, for anybody out there that's got kids, the Onward sticker book is currently at the Dollar Tree and the Onward stickers. I, I happen to pick up some myself. So if you're, you know, into that Disney movie, that movie, man, that was a little tough. I, I've seen it four times, unfortunately. Yeah. Lee. Being like some of the like to, to bring his dad back right for a day, that that movie was a tad tough, uh, but it was a good it was a good watch. It, it, it was, and and the stickers are kind of a fun way. Uh, you know, we we've been incentivizing Bentley the last two days. Hey, you know, you're good at, at daycare, you can get a pack. Yeah. You well, know? tomorrow is Robbie's second birthday, and uh, he loves the movie Trolls, and one because of the music and then the colors. Sure. It's a very bright bright movie. Mm-hmm. Well, Trolls Two or World Two or whatever comes out Friday, so we're gonna rent that. It's a new in theaters movie, but since nobody could go to the theater, they're putting it out so I can rent it on con on my Xfinity box. Nice. So we're gonna do that with him on Friday. He's really excited about the Trolls movie. 
but I've seen Trolls, the first movie, um, in the last four weeks, probably about 25 times. And I find myself singing songs quite a few times, quite a bit when I'm by myself. So, uh, yeah, love Timberlake, though. So, uh, infield chat of the Hobby Talk section part of the show, our Hobby Hotline promo this Saturday live on YouTube, Periscope, Facebook at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Drew Herndon, the, pan, the cat man himself, all you crazy cats, cats and kittens. Let me get the potograph host. Drew Herndon will be on Mike Summer, Wax Pack Hero, uh, Sports Card Minute host, and Ben Wilson about the chart cards will be there. Um, I, I, <laughs> um, I finished the Tiger King thing. <clears throat> Real quick, the teeth and the hair in that what those people had were just phenomenal. There were so many so many bad haircuts and miss, missing teeth and arms and yeah, if you've not watched it yet, do it can't be he can't be a real person. No, it, <laughs> it's great because I, I had somebody on my Facebook page and she's like, that movie was totally overrated. And, and I'm just thinking, listen, especially right now that we're all complaining because we're stuck inside the house. And it's like, no matter how bad you think your life gets, you watch a couple minutes of the tiger King and go, well, I thought mine was bad, but it's not that bad. Hey, all you crazy <laughs> cats and kittens. And that's how, I, that's how I should leave off every show. No, please don't. Yeah. No. Uh, and, and apparently it has a local angle in that, uh, uh, I guess his, uh, Pet store used to be in Arlington here. Mm. Just some good watching. I love this hobby. So uh, at Card Chop tweeted this out earlier uh, or had this out earlier this week. Didn't know if I wanted to move this, but there's a card I'm really wanting on eBay. $80 shipped, one of one, Andrew Jones gold vinyl. So he has this card um, that he, he put up for sale for 80 bucks, right? A, a gold vinyl Andrew Jones autograph, significant signatures from Prism, um, or I'm sorry, from Optic. Optic. And Robert Ballas at our Ballas on Twitter said, I'll take it, Bayless. but send it to, hey, it's T Murph. So he bought the card for 80 bucks, but sent it to someone else um, that would enjoy the card, uh, you know, for their, for their PC. That, 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 that's pretty amazing, you know. It, it it's and I'm not. We're not talking a five or ten dollar card. We're talking almost a hundred by eighty dollars, right? Yeah. You know, and it's an awesome card, and you know it's going to the right place, and it's going from one Braves fan to uh, to another. But at the same time, um, just what you know, what a nice gesture, and this is what our hobby is all about. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be monetarily valuable. At eighty dollars for something that we've done in a hobby, it's sometimes as easy. As, I've had people, you know, send me two or three base cards, and they didn't ask for anything in return. They said it will come back to me, yeah. and I do the same thing all the time. People are like, you know, hey, what can I send you? For? I said, no, we'll we'll figure out something. We'll have a trade, or you're gonna, I'm gonna need something from you in the future. You're, you know, whatever. We're gonna work it out. Um, and that and that's just how it is. So, uh. You know, I, I dropped, you know, hey, like, I need to, I'm trying to get these top or heritage short print cards last night. And I think it was like 15 or 20 cards. I need to have like, there was, I'm down to like half because of people like Matt Haas, Steve Furman, somebody named TB Fire, and my buddy Eric. They all had, are sending me half <laughs> of the cards I needed. And, you know, some one of some were like, "Hey, just just cover shipping. If you can pay for shipping, then they're yours." Okay, you know, hey, I looked; it's five bucks to send these these eight cards your way. Well, that's way cheaper than me trying to go and buy them. And and it's just like I say, "Hey, what can I send you?" No, it's like you know, we'll find something later. So, yeah, you, you see that a lot in the Twitter community, and and you know, I've gotten a lot of freebies, and you know, people reach out and say, "Hey, I just got this. You interested?" And, and, you know, sometimes they'll just say, hey, even if you already have it, I'll send it to you anyway, because, you know, there's a lot of local people here that Tim can, uh, you know, attest to that are A's collectors. So I can get it into the hands of another A's collector, um, and, you know, and pay it forward. You know, it's 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 one of those things that we're all in this hobby together. And it's 
it's nice to see when we can rehome a card or cards that you know are going to the right place. And yeah, eighty dollars that's a heavy price point to to do that. And that's that's awfully gracious and uh it's awesome to see. Yeah. So speaking of that, hey, I have these three yellow Donruss A's for you. And then I have the Man of Steel and the other Ricky Henderson. I know it's a Yankees card, but you talked about wanting them. So I have the five yellow cards. Uh these are these right here are twenty five dollars. Oh nice. I'm giving you a deal. Each. I, I'll cover shipping too, since we yeah. can't come see each other. Oh, and by the way, then I had the base versions of the rookies, so I pulled those aside for you too. Didn't you have a Matt Chapman or something for me too? Maybe. Let me look. Mike, Mike Chapman, Mark Chapman. Well, I got. I have a pile of cards here. I have for you. Mark David Chapman. Oh, Mark David. Ch I have an Addison <laughs> Russell sig signature for our, our sketch card from Project yeah. Prospect Rush. God, uh, I have a Jarrell. I'll never play in the major leagues. Cotton autograph. I don't know. He's a Cub, and Cubs, you know, they need all the help that they can get. Um, yeah, I have a Matt Chapman purple. Yeah, that was it. I knew I knew there was a Matt Chapman. Oh, and then I have a uh, Satchmo. I love me some. Very I got some nice. good stuff here for you. It'll go well so with my little eight-inch bust that I have of it. Yeah, and I have a, I have a, I always have a baggie for for Steph here. By the way, Steph, I found a couple more yellows. Nice. So, it, it practically the complete team set then. Yeah, because that uh, rated rookie Gra Gratterall or whatever he's listed as a twin uh, in yeah. the yellow set. Yep. So he's uh, he's there for you. So yes, uh, once a Cub does the Donruss Reds and Pinks. They're from Targets, I believe. The hollow color. Yes. Yeah the the pink fireworks not the not the mm -hmm. hollow but the, the pink fireworks man those are. Sweet in person, they're neat. I, I, yeah. Not a fan of Donruss, but this year I've been opening some and it, it's been good. I oh, by the way, too, completed my Donruss set from from charity as well. The only card I actually really had to buy was the uh San Diego chicken card, which must have been a tough pull because mm -hmm. it was like six bucks. Well, those are a little bit uh, they're, they're not really short printed, but they're uh, they're, they're definitely harder to pull, yeah. So, but I can play that full set plus all of the nickname and uh action variation or the picture swaps or whatever you want to call them for that so that was a fun set to do uh number down to zero at bayside breakers who by the way talk about generous folks sent you know ben and i complete sets of stars and stripes uh new trick from panini to get more parallels start numbering the cards at zero <laughs> this is a 19 panini select garden gardener minchu the third numbered triple zero out of 199 So does that by by this measure do we start doing two hundred out of one ninety nine, two hundred one out of one ninety nine? I mean, well, why stop um, there? You, you used to see this a bit more um, when they first started putting serial numbers on the card, where it would be like XXX out of six hundred or not one ninety nine or what have you. Preview out of one ninety nine. Um, yeah, this is that was my thought that this was a preview print or something that uh, got packed up that shouldn't have been right. That's awesome. It, you know, you know, if it, if it is something that was done like that and, and it ended up accidentally making it into a pack, that's a that's a cool novelty piece. Yeah. Certainly. And by the way, do you read the back of this card? It says teams typically struggle upon losing their starting quarterback. Luckily for the Jaguars, they had Minshew take over take over once Nick Folds went down in week three of 2019. The signal caller provide proved his worth by tossing two touchdowns and leading Jacksonville to a 27 victory over the Tennessee, his first win. That is some updated information on 2019 card. I liked it. Value of the card said my case had two chickens and two Domingos. Nice. I actually had a trade for Domingo, but I did open, you know, those dollar packs and I pulled like three Luis Robert rated rookies. So, I, and then that uh, the kid from Tampa, I man, I was pulling him left and right. I think I got like four variation colors of him, that guy. Mm. So um, I couldn't find any. At my Dollar Tree, and that's why I bought uh, Onward. That's stickers. because Big Chef's been telling everybody in sack to hit up Dollar Tree. <laughs> but I, I don't know, like I said, I'm not a Donruss collector at all. It got me to buy Donruss. Like, I bought some to do a retail, a rip and retail video, which I was mm -hmm. okay with because I was like, hey, I spent like 20 bucks. And I was like, hey, it was a fun video. But this got me like, I was next to one, and I would not go into the Dollar Tree normally. And, you know, unless I'm in the hunt of cards, but I was told that they weren't having cards anymore, you know? Right. Went in there, they had the Donruss, and I was like, 
let's do it. Let's see what happens. It was fun. I, I think I've got like five of the red hollows now, and there's only nine in that team set. I might have to just grab the last couple and this, call it good. I have a question for you, and it's it, it's kind of taking us off where we are here, but it, it's fine because I, I want to have kind of turn this like the hobby hotline, a little more open discussion as doors open. You said like, "Hey, I have five. Like, how did you get the five of the nine? Was it something you were looking for? Did they come in like other deals? Like, we bought a lot, and no, they so just cost in, or th there's another topic that's similar to this. I know we're going to catch a little bit later in the show, but on this particular one, it was there were a couple on there for ninety nine cents free shipping. So I was like, ah, you know, I'll pay like two bucks for them, and I want them at a buck a piece. So I ended up with two there. I bought a Luzardo. I bought um, I forget who else. There was I, I think I've already got the the Red Hollow Simi and Diamond King. And and there are the 1986 retro ones, which I'm not counting because they have a different uh, different border. Um, so it's just the nine that all look the same. Um, but yeah, I picked up like four or five just buying them here or there because they look nice. And if you're paying a dollar or two, why not grab? That's kind of what I do with some of the parallel sets. Um, but like the logo swap in Gypsy Queen was another one where I bought three of them and then I won two more at auction. And now you're five out of ten and it's like, I'm, so you I'm, didn't I'm plan kidding. on building either one of these sets when they first got released, correct? No, in fact, the Independence Day was the only Donruss parallel set I had planned, and then I ended up with a couple of the 100s, and I thought, ah, the Baby Shark are probably going to be a fun one to go just because, you know, having small kids. That sure. song is prevalent in every home of, of uh, small kids. And uh, so, yeah, the Baby Shark, I think, outside of Independence Day, was the only one I targeted until I realized I was halfway to the 100. <laughs> and the blue hollow was another one. And now it's like, if I'm halfway to the red hollow, if I've got five of the nine, might as well dive off that, that diving board. So yeah. I, my, I, I my, think or, or, organically, I end up with more parallel sets than I intend. My question is on that being in the current state of the world that we are, is that driven you to now kind of in like the utter madness that we're in? And the, the feeling that we don't have any control over what we really can do besides in the walls of our home, has that kind of made you like go after a few more of these sets than you normally would? Do you believe well, yeah, that's been a difference at all? Yeah, because it, it's one of those things where stickers, which is one of the easiest to get in and out of each year, right? You, there's no parallels. Um, you know, it's getting pushed back two weeks. A lot of these, these are, you know, we've saw Bowman's already been pushed back to the end of May at least. Um, you know, it's one of those things where idle hands, you have three of the yellows for me. And if there's only nine to pursue, I've already bought the semi and diamond King. So now with the three you have, plus the one I've already got, that's four out of the nine. So why not do that one too? And it's like, if I don't have anywhere else to allocate that money to, you know, you know, you end up with more than you had anticipated. Yeah. Instead of you found a, have, you found, yeah have you found yourself? Buying some stuff you not might not normally buy because you're confined. Well, uh, cer certainly, um, and I've noticed that uh, with more idle time on my hands, I've been able to go back and uh, I bought a five pack of notebooks, each with a different color, and uh, I just sat down with my binders. This one's Tops Bowman, etc. This one's Donruss Leaf, etc. This one's Upper Deck Fleer, etc. And this one's Pre War Oddball, etc. And start on binder number one, go all the way through. I think I have tops left. Uh, yeah. Some of the oddball non base sets and Bowman. I mean, I don't want to start that. But, it's, it's, yeah. And then going through sport lots and saying, okay, so for Fleer, I need these three. And actually, that's the other half of my purchase. I picked up uh, 297 Upper Deck updates. Nice. So, you know, I've been able to, to I, I talked about this before, but. My, I have my checklist for the 25 or 28 sets for both the Giants and the Royals I, I want to have, the brands, mm -hmm. uh, the releases. And then I've been able to go through and sort the base and then start moving, marking off what I've had. And I've had to go back because there's been a couple like subsets or secondary releases. Like you remember the score? Like they had the the rising 100 and then like the superstar 100. Mm -hmm. I went back and put those on my score checklist because I like those sets. So, you know, I've updated that, but it's I've gone through and like I'm this is stuff I've planned doing for like five or six years, maybe even seven years, and I've knocked so much out in the last month 
that I haven't done in years. Uh, it, it's just been crazy. So um, we're talking a little bit about the COVID-19 effect. So last week, the printers uh, are closing. So Tops and Panini's new releases will be affected. Cardamundi, uh, who's based down in, uh, they have a printing operation down in Dallas, is closed by state order. Yeah, I'm going to go back to it. Um, is closed by state order. And uh, we talked a little bit about this on the hobby hotline, but I was the only one on this week, and I don't want to know what your guys' thoughts are. You know, we've, we've already seen Bowman, which is one of the biggest releases this year, get pushed back, uh, you know, six weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen some other releases get pushed back. How do you, how many new releases do you think are packed and ready to ship um, currently? So if you factor in this is the fourth month of the year, everything's usually six months out, I would say. Uh, another two, three, four releases each. Um, just because, you know, we already knew Bowman was coming out. They probably delayed it to try to get out more actual signed autographed cards or apply stickers and pu pump them through. I mean, it, we're all kind of dealing with skeleton crews um, for, from what I've heard from people who work here, there, and everywhere. Um, so... It's not exactly surprising, and unfortunately, it means that we have more time to do, like we were just saying, make extra purchases. But um, how many? I mean, well, yeah. Here, look, here's, look at here's the here's extended stuff. list. Uh, yeah, here's of what some got stuff. In, back. Yeah, here's some stuff in July that we have coming up that I think is interesting. So July third, you have finest. Uh, July tenth, series two. July seventeenth, or I'm sorry, June. June 3rd, Finest, June 10th, Series 2, June 17th, Museum, June 24th, Tier 1. Good Lord, that's a lot. And then the 24th, you have Tier 1, Pro Debut, Big League, and Stadium Club. That ain't happening. All four of those no. are on the same day. No, it's definitely not. Uh, the 1st, Ju July 1st, uh, with well, a complete card set, but then you have Diamond Icons, the 8th, along with Archive Signature Series, player Retired Player Edition, the 15th of July, Allen and Ginter. Now, all we start to see all these get affected. So, like Allen and Ginter, Sterling Baseball, uh, Chrome, Luminaries, you know, Archives Baseball, uh, Gold Label, Bowman Chrome, you know, are all going to be affected. For football products, you know, I think we're going to see, you know, all those be kind of held off since we're going to wait for the draft. But in basketball, you still have some mosaic stuff that's supposed to be coming out, National Treasures, Obsidian, uh, it's supposed to drop. And, um, so I just think that we're going to have quite a few pushbacks, and that's just probably going to mean a crazy October, November, and December. Uh, I right. wanted to get you guys' thoughts were that way. Well, and then uh, as far as the actual printer goes, I mean, it sucks. I, I know that uh, one of our buddies whose birthday is today, uh, happy birthday, by the way, um, his aunts and nieces, I think, work at one of the printing facilities here that most use, whether it's Cardamundi or the one that they associate with for the actual cutting and processing. Um, it sucks for them. It sucks that they're closed by state order. I think we just got pushed back to the beginning of May for Texas, uh, at least for non-essential businesses. May 4th. May 4th. Angela with the hookup. May the fourth be with you. Indeed, uh, hopefully. Um, and, and you know, not 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 just because we're greedy collectors and we need the sets pushed out, but so that those people can get back to their jobs and tops can have a semi-stable in this non-stable yeah. universe. So uh, pretty nuts, and then also the, like supply shortage. Uh, I reached out to the two of the distributors I work with that are, are pretty large, or one of them's really large, and the other one's pretty large where top loaders are, have been and continue to be back ordered. Um, and a lot of stuff is produced by, you know, in China and also two pages. I got a case of pages then uh, today that, uh, you know, stuff needed some pages. And I, I was like, I could use a few. So I ordered a case yesterday. My guy called me and said, Hey, this might be the last you want more. Cause this might be the end of it for a little bit. You know, yep. have, we probably have a run a runway of a week or so. Uh, the way we sell pages left, but you know, I, he goes, yeah, top loaders. He goes, I, I, I think, as far as supplies go, I think pages are going to be a little less uh, sought after as opposed to top loaders. I think this this time that we all have extra, 
you, you know, I think some people are going to put stuff in binders. Sure. But overall, the top loaders are going to be a big deal because you're going to see a lot of people selling because they have more time to move some of the dead inventory uh, that they haven't listed. Uh, more people are going to start buying. We've seen that, but idle hands are leading to that. And as people have lost their jobs, you know, un unemployment claims here in California, um, you know, there's a three week. Typically, if you file for unemployment, say on the first of the month, you're probably not even going to get the call from the unemployment department until around the 21st. And that's under regular, normal circumstances uh, for that phone interview. Um, you're not going to see that probably for five, six weeks now, in which case some of the people that, you know, hopefully are back at work by the time they ever receive that, you, you know, they'll get back paid for the weeks they were off. But, um, you know, you might start seeing some people get a little desperate. And, if, you know, if you've got cards laying around, you might start selling whether you want to or not. And I think top loaders are going to be scarce. You know, you know, I mean, I personally have a bunch in, in, a, in my garage that I'd be happy to offload to some people if they're willing to cover the cost of shipping. Um, you know, we always work out a deal as far as that goes. If, if people got desperate, I've got quite a few uh, with no, no real place for them to go. They're just collecting dust, but. I and think, <clears throat> sorry, clearing my throat. <laughs> now I think I have to go get tested. I know. No, no. Uh, Ange Angela brought a plate of uh, some burgers and fries. Oh, there we go. Or just why bring us some some food. Why don't you guys eat like at a normal time? I mean, it, it, it's always like ten or eleven when you guys eat dinner there. B because the um, times that my mom can actually get to sleep change day to day. It's not like she's down from such time to such time. So she might take an afternoon nap. She might take a early breakfast uh, nap. It kind of changes how the day is going to eventually roll out. You know how bad it is for your digestive system to eat after 5 p.m.? Mm -hmm. You know, you're not allowing your digestive system. That's how you get a heartburn and acid reflux. And that's and, how you gain this weight. this is from Ben, the picture of health over here. <laughs> <laughs> I am... Listen, yeah. just because do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. Okay. So PSA, uh, Steve Sloan from PSA tweeted uh, out uh, this list earlier uh, this week. And to give you a little idea of who he is, he's at collector Sloan on Twitter. He is the PSA uh, card president of sports cards and um, tweet out. So the top 10, here we go in reverse order. Number 10, Pete Alonzo, nine, LeBron James, eight, Ronald Acuna Jr. Seven, Michael Jordan. Six, Vlad Guerrero Jr. Five, Fernando Tatis Jr. Kobe Bryant was number four. Luka Doncic, number three. Ja Morant, number two. And number one, Zion Williamson. And I find it funny because Zion, Ja, and Luka were picks one, two, and three. Zion, Luka obviously in a different year, but um, pretty funny. Interesting that six of the ten are basketball, which has a much different uh, – Consumer market on the secondary, you know, you're, see, you're seeing a lot of that stuff sell. I mean, obviously, Kobe Bryant, unfortunately, there's a reason he's on that list. But, um, you know, six out of ten being basketball is interesting. We got no football. No football. No, no hockey. hockey. Yeah. And what, what, so I'm just I'm, – I'm not saying, but I'm just saying football not as sought after. Well, and if you were to try to guess – between those two sports, who would you put at the top? I mean, Brady, obviously, with a uh, change in teams, maybe. Yeah, but his current stuff, you know, he's got very limited <clears throat> autograph things out there, and that's really what they are. No one's grading a base card of his. Uh, you know, and the, the rookie quarterback class, I mean, was kind of like, eh, we're st it's still a huge unnoon. Well, even you know? going back two years outside of Lamar, yeah. yeah, I mean, what, what do you have in Darnold? Or... Everybody was like, mm. yeah. All these other guys are going to be good. Lamar was, the, you know, the last pick of the first round. So, yeah. And, and didn't Baltimore have to trade back into the first round to grab him? I think like they, they always do. Ozzie Newsom, man. That was his last first round trade in draft pick. And he's always done so well with that. Well, yeah, because you want that fifth year option on a quarterback contract, no less. Yeah. I mean, I don't, you're not doing that to grab a running back. Uh, but, yeah, it's just kind of interesting because we know how much – I mean, granted, it was basketball season when all this went on. So, of course, that stuff's going to be hot in March versus the NBA or NFL. 
Um, you know, but it's also interesting to see the four names that were baseball. Yeah, you know, it's not established big leaguers. It's you know young guys. You know, one or two years in the league. Yeah, you know, it just show, it just shows the the level of speculation. But those guys have played well though. You know, they haven't really come up and sputtered. If you look at the seasons, I mean, Tatis was injured last for part of last year, but Alonzo played really, really well. Guerrero had a good season. Um, you know, so it's it, it just you know it, it's interesting to me on you know. What is Acuna is who he is. I mean, he's had some some really nice seasons come together. I was surprised. I think that the basketball kind of pushed down maybe a Juan Soto uh, as well. It was probably pretty high on that list. So yeah, that, 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 that's one that I that was surprised to see as well was Soto, especially with the World Series run. Yeah, yeah, it, it'd be interesting to see eleven through twenty just yeah. just for comparative analysis. Yeah. So. Um, so there's an update in the Panini versus Collectors Un- Collectors Vault case at Paul Lesko. There's a lot here. So follow at Paul underscore Lesko on Twitter uh, for a lot of this. But I pulled just some of the, the top part of the information. I mean, he he had a series of like 20 or some odd tweets about this the other day. Uh, it was actually two days ago. So uh, we have an update in the Panini versus Collectors Vault case. The parties last Friday filed a status report in preparation for the upcoming Schedule conf- scheduling conference where parties in the court will bang out the timeline for the case. Uh, a few things jumped out to me at this first filing. In the first, in the I mean, in the filing first, it appears that Roger Lynn agrees he was served in this case, and the and his date to answer the complaint will be sometime this week. Uh, second, a lot more interesting. We get our first view at Roger Lynn's side of the case. Basically, he claims he had limited knowledge of trading cards and no idea rated rookie was trademarked and relied on others who put up the alleged infringed products up for sale. Regardless, it looks like Lynn, Roger Lynn and Panini are talking about a settlement. So his tenure in this case may be over soon. What's that mean? We may finally know who's behind collector's vault. It was created by Lynn to sell DVDs and CDs and trading cards with the alleged help by an individual named Joseph Chan. It also appears Collector's Vault received its inventory of allegedly infringed rated rookie cards um, game from Jay Longo, who is named plaintiff in the now settled Panini vs. Nucero case. Uh, much more to follow. I said follow, you know, follow Paul Lesko. It goes on and on about some of the other guys. There's like three or four levels of people in this case. Um, but this has to be, this is the top and the way they're working back down through it. Um, it's very interesting. I just think that, you know, it's like, we saw these cards. Come on now. If you know anything about trading cards, you've seen a rated rookie card at some point, even if it's almost like, you know, dude selling drugs is like, yeah, I I was selling the cocaine, but man, I didn't know it was illegal. Are you serious? I mean. How no. can you not know something is trademarked? Everything's trademarked. He was selling you know? Coke a cane. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, there, the, the last part that, that is really interesting. So, you know, if you're listening, go go read it yourself because uh, Lesko's thoughts are really neat. And, and uh, but Stephen Tiani, who's also part of this lawsuit, claims his innocence. Apparently, there was an investigation locally. Uh, and the cops basically said, dude has no. No involvement in this case whatsoever. Um, you know, he, he's vehemently denied being involved and, and petitioned the court, and Panini's kept him as part of the case. And so Lesko's thoughts are Panini's going to come out looking pretty bad on this if two things happen. If they do keep him on this, and it comes out that he was not involved, uh, it's going to give them a black eye, and they're going to be you know, admonished by the court. And it could affect their overall, you know, they're, they're more or less going to probably settle um by and large with everybody, but I, you know, if, if local authorities ran an investigation and absolved this guy of any wrongdoing in relation to this particular case and Panini's saying, Hey, we think otherwise, well, you know, that, that might not do so well if you're asking the court to, to judge on this case overall, yeah. especially as long as it's taken for everybody oh, to, yeah, God, what's yeah. this been like 18 months or so at least. Yeah. It took it could, forever to find yeah. To find uh, Lynn. Yeah, I think it took him a while to subpoena eBay for for records to find out who Collector's Vault was. I mean, this whole thing's been botched from the beginning. But, um, you know, definitely, if you're not following Paul Lesko, definitely do that. Take a look at the the findings because it's a fascinating read. Very interesting. 
if you got some extra time on your hands. Um, 4X Large, I'm a big dude. And uh, at G Dubs Cards tweeted this out the other day. Uh, Gabe, Gabe's awesome. Um, he's uh, in a fancy baseball league I'm in. Um, and so I, I've seen a lot of behind on this, but Nico Horner is listed six foot one, 200 pounds. I'm six, six, 300 pounds, and I don't wear. Hey, Tim, re reread that again. I, I know it says he says Nico Hosmer, but it's Nico Horner. I, I gave him a spell correct. Um, I don't wear a 4XL sized anything because it's too big for me. Baseball jerseys run large too. I don't get this tag patch at all. It doesn't add up. So he tweeted this out. It's a it's a uh, man. It's a you know patch from the jersey, but it has four extra large, and we all know it's from Leaf Trinity. So we all know that they give these guys super big jerseys to put on uh, to wear, so they can get more material, player worn material, to make other cards. So I understand. I mean, we've seen the picture, Mark. Um, Ingram from the 2011 uh, rookie premiere, and he's wearing about 75 jerseys at one time, and uh, he looks like a clump. And and so we all know that they do that, or they wear the double zero jerseys or the jerseys that say rookie on the back of the name plates, so they get more sure. corners and angles. So, yeah, and that was my first thought when I when I saw it in the but show notes. My, I didn't see the tweet. I, my thought was, you know, at some point. The two X has to become a three X to fit around the jerseys and and, and what he's wearing currently, mm-hmm. and at some but point the three X has the card. Well, and that's just it, you know. Probably Brian Gray's <laughs> <laughs> Ding. <laughs> no, that, that, that's the thing. I, I I am one inch short of uh, Nico Hosmer's height here. And uh, I, I, I got a uh, Ben Franklin on him in size, and I don't wear a four X. Yeah, no, I mean I, I'm I'm just I'm not as tall as, as Gabe here, but uh, we're in the same ballpark. And uh, yeah, I mean I, I don't I can't wear a four X. It looks like I'm swimming in it. The only time I'll ever buy one is if it's a shirt that doesn't come like in a tall. But even then, it's a it's looks it looks weird. So I just I I. I I get his point, but the thing is, is like, don't use that patch then, right? When you're using a jersey that we all know is too big for yeah. the dude, it just shows that, hey, this was just whatever off the shelf, so you can get a lot more material, you know, out of uh, out of a jersey. It's just, it's just lame. That that's right. common no, sense, we, Tim. Yeah. No, and, and we've talked about this before. This is something that came up back in like 2011 on Cardboard Connection. Um, you know, we were talking about, you know the whole Jersey gate thing with the, you know, the upper deck and the Jeter jerseys and that whole fiasco. And, you know, my thought at the time and, and to this day is I'd much rather have a beautiful, wholly 100% manufactured relic that looks gorgeous, right? The green and yellow stripe or, or anything related to the A's on an A's card. But, but knowing that it never touched a player's skin or wore it at all, I'd much rather have that as a piece of art in my collection than having a white swatch that was part of a jersey that the player might have had five jerseys on that, you know, he touched the sleeves as he was pulling it over his, okay, <laughs> next, and takes it back off. And then you're going to cut a little piece of white off the, the bottom corner that has no DNA of his. It's like, you, you know, relics are, are, are probably tired at this point in the hobby anyway and have been for a few years now. So, to me, it's but like yeah, don't keep- yeah, don't use that tag. It, it doesn't offer anything, especially when we know this is not some jumbo offensive lineman. You know, it's a normal sized human being that plays baseball. We have to keep the relics. And do you know why I say that? Nobody knows. Overproduction. Because if, if they're guaranteeing you think of think if series think of flagship baseball didn't guarantee any hits, mm-hmm. they could run the presses all day. And to go back to 1989 tops, mm-hmm. think about it, right? Because yeah. they have to have that material yeah. to put one in, and the majority of the time you're getting a white piece of jersey. You're not you're maybe at out of a case of 10 boxes, you're going to get four autographs and six Jersey relics. Yeah. So uh, and you know, the, the, relic, the relics. 
I've picked up a couple of Matt Olson relics from Donruss and the Clubhouse Connection, Chapman from Heritage, and they're white relics. They're nothing fancy, but I didn't spend more than $4 on any one of the cards either. Um, but then you see some of these awesome ones out of Inception. They're, they're nice-looking relics. Um, you know, Panini's had them in, in Immaculate and things for years. And even if they're, they're not real, per se, um, the relic isn't authentic compared to what we used to know as, you know, the alleged game used and game worn. How am I supposed to know it anyway, right? I'm watching classic baseball in the background. How do I know that the jersey actually came from so-and-so? You're not giving me a date in a game. You know, it's not like a movie prop where I can watch the movie and say, yeah, that was used on screen and touched by this actor or actress. Yeah. Um, white, white relics are lazy. I much prefer manufactured stuff that, that are nice coins and all, you know, uh, the baseball treasures type stuff. Those are freaking neat to me. I mean, personally, you know, maybe not to the masses of, of hobbyists, but to me, I like them. Um, but you, you can save this kind of crap and, you know, 4XL on a, you know, 200 pound dude. Come on. Yeah. He and his brother were looking at me or something, right? I'm shorter. I'm shorter and I weigh more than him and, and I wear an XL. And so you're saying three sizes bigger than that. I mean, this guy's got six inches on me and huh. le less poundage as well. Um, I, I mean, come on, man. That's still three sizes too small for me personally. No, no way. This guy, this guy had to be wearing 30 jerseys in order to, to justify a four X. Is that one of those friendship uh, T-shirts where you're fighting with your brother, sister, whatever? So your parents torture you and say, "Hey, hey here's a triple." It's like, uh, it's like Brian Gray literally uh, cut Gave up his wife's yeah. back. <laughs> he cut up his wife's snuggie and said, "You know, sorry, honey, no family cuddling tonight." Uh, we have a, we have a handful of listener questions here. We thought we put them all together before we bounce to that. This just came across the print desk here. So, Tim, Tim you were on um, Stump the Schwab, right? Yes. So, let me ask you. Who was in Super Bowl for 2017? The, Febru the Fe February 3rd, 2017. Uh, so, it's been the 16th season. Mm -hmm. uh, was it the uh, Eagles-Patriots? That would have been... Or it's the Falcons Patriots. The Falcons, Falcons Patriots. Patriots. Yeah. Okay. So what you're saying is that it wasn't the Rams and Patriots? No. Speaking of game dated and holding companies responsible. Yeah, that's uh that's pretty terrible. Oh. That's sad. Come on. It's not hard. We all have Google now. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying, man. It's so easy. You you have, uh, you know, Google and Alexa where you can literally ask them a question. Siri. It's like, so if you're if you're doing your work and you're like, I don't know, you don't even have to, you can be lazy. The quality control on this is ridiculous, man. I mean, you know, but if, if we're talking about Leaf specifically, we're literally talking about a fake company making cards out of their, you know, He's out in the backyard barbecuing, and his kids making cards for daddy for Father's Day. Sir, he was at the Whataburger. Yeah. So, yeah. listen, listen to questions. Uh, this one comes from at Debbie two five LW. Any recommendations of higher end card storage, different cases recommended, etc. So, what are your thoughts on higher end cards? So, I'm thinking, you know, maybe autographs and low numbered and, you know high value cards um see if this were lower end i would say put them in the sleeve put them in a top loader and store them nicely but since you said high end my, my recommendation thereof since i was looking at these earlier today uh, team bag mag touch with the penny sleeve over the auto now, now, you'd ask why, but that's for if and when you actually take it out or if you need to take it out, the penny sleeve actually keeps it off the surface so that it doesn't get stuck to there like some of the 90s cards and uh, holders would. 
Yeah. So I, I do like like I ordered these new sleeves that are supposed to not have this excess material. So mm -hmm. they're supposed to look nice and tight. Um, and I'm hopefully have those on Friday. So I might do a quick video on those. But no, I, I like one touches quite a bit for higher end cards. Um, I'm a big top loader guy on you know rookie cards and certain other cards. Um, you also too can you know have it have it graded or authenticated through one of those companies uh, to keep it locked up. So you know there's a lot there's a lot of ways to be able to protect your cards. Ultra Pro I think has some of the best supplies out there for longevity. They don't yellow or or stain or any of that stuff. So. Yeah, and then no matter what you do, too, temperature control. You don't want the mm -hmm. environment to be too hot or too cold. Uh, preferably too hot is, is, you know, you can definitely, uh, some of the tops chrome and things like that will definitely curl even more than, than they have. Um, so, you know, you want to make sure that the environment's not too terrible. Yeah. So, well, real quick, well, what's, what nice, remember the old screw downs? Mm hmm. So. I'll open up. So a one touch is basically the same thing as the old screw down, except for now it has a magnet for those that yep. aren't familiar. So it has a, it has a little case. So you have a, you have an indent inside. You have a little cutout inside here where your card fits. Now this is a hundred, this is for a hundred point card. So this would be like a thicker card stock or something. Might have a Jersey or Jersey relic or something like that in there. And then you just, it clips down in. And then the magnet shuts it tight, and then it doesn't open. You don't need a screwdriver or any of that stuff, um, you know, so to, to be able to get. And they're one of my favorite things. And another great tool that you can get, and you can get them from free, uh, from, you know, Ultra Pro, mm -hmm. these little gauges. And, and magnifying. And a little magnifier. But you put up your card, and it tells you what size top loader or one touch you would need to you know for to store and protect your cards so well and, and the one thing I, I would recommend is if if you have a shop that um has some open or will let you see one um w one of the good things that uh the shop here in arlington did they had a one of each open so that you could go down the line and say hey no i need one slightly bigger or i need one slightly smaller now, obviously, the sizer comes in handy, but between Ultra Pro and BGS, they're slightly different on their size preference. And one has a better magnet versus the other. And if they don't let you, like, if they don't have samples or they're not willing to take a product off the shelf, then that's odd to me because, you know, they, they're able to buy these from distributors mm -hmm. at a very nice price especially because they're probably buying in bulk. So I would say, you know, they, they should have some around or they should be using them themselves. And I know the LCS here has, uh, has an old one, you know, the, the car, the three, a three row or four row box full mm -hmm. of, of, you know, one touches or, or topplers that have where people pull the pack off the shelf because they got an awesome hit and they, they throw the extra in there to, to give out from when other awesome pulls are done in the shop and you can play around and look at them. So that's my thing. They have the regular size penny sleeves and they also offer a thicker penny sleeve um, that go up to cards for, to, um, you know, 130 point. And I think they even have bigger ones and the, these are great too. So make sure that if you're putting those in a regular plain top loader, you have penny sleeves, you know, stop putting the card in a penny sleeve. Yep. So, and then if you like the card savers, not a huge fan, I like to put the card in a penny sleeve and then in the card saver because it's hard after all, if that card has any kind of a gloss finish to get it out of that card mm -hmm. saver later down the road. Somebody sent me a bunch of Bowman draft cards that were Chrome. I've had in a box for like three years. I had to cut all of them out because I could <laughs> not pull them. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I got, I was able to cut open and, and, and be able to pull the card out safely. So, so you're admitting quick. you're a card trimmer. I am a card trimmer. Great question, <laughs> Debbie. Uh, keep those are the questions we love. Th there, there are no dumb questions. Um, if you're not sure what to do or how to, you know, like I think Steph, you sent me one about somebody that was shipping singles, mm -hmm. and they were like, "What's the best, you know, way to do this?" And you know, four or five cards in a PWE. Um, you know, if you're doing a bubble mailer, make sure you're using PayPal.com/slash. Was it ship? Uh, 
yeah, if you have a PayPal account, you you get this this, and you get you get you can put in the size and the weight um, of the bubble mailer. Most are three three ounces. Get you quite. It's like three ounces, and then it goes to like eight ounces, or where the different price points come in. Um, so it's you know it's one of those things like if you need to have quite yeah it's uh, paypal.com slash ship label slash create uh, you can go in there and and sign in with your PayPal account and get discounts on the shipping uh, and you can print out the labels at your house so yeah, it, it, and there are no dumb questions because that's how we all learn I mean we've all been there before and we asked somebody who was wiser than we were at that time and it's better to ask even if you think you know the answer and and, and field other opinions uh, than make a mistake, uh, make a mistake, especially when you're storing and shipping and are you're potentially going to be selling that or you are selling that because, you know, you're, you're caretaking those items for now. And so yeah. you, you have a monetary transaction. So you got to think of it like, even though it's yours, if it's for sale or might be for sale, protect it as if it's not yours because someday very well it might not be. Yeah. Uh, and then at D... DF Vaden had a question. Manufacturers should take into account supplies before, or should manufacturers take into uh, account supplies before producing sets? One base, eight parallels for nine pocket page. Do you visualize your display of a set before sorting? I, I traditionally don't um, because the way I, the way I do like my team sets is that I'll have them run concurrently. So you know if if say 2019 series you know one ends at like the in the eighth spot then all of series two start at the ninth spot and work its way down and then say 2020 comes along and 19 ended at spot five i'll have 2020 take over at spot six so it kind of flows all together but the thing that sucks with that is if you missed a card or you missed an insert you have to go and move a whole bunch of cards so there is that what are your thoughts yeah, yeah so you know we i alluded to this earlier um, you know, Gypsy Queen is a perfect example as a team collector because I, I break everything up by release. Um, this year's A's team set had 10 base cards, two extended. So you've got 12. Not a big deal. You had two, uh, uh, a short print and a super short print. So now you got 14. So you could fill out two pages without a problem. But I like to build parallel sets. And sans the two extended base, you've got 10 cards. How do you... How do you do that? You don't want to have a, a single card on that extra sleeve, you know, that extra page in, in every single one. So what I've done with Gypsy Queen in the past and what I did this year was Seth Brown is the first because I alphabetized my, my team sets by player last name. So from left to right, I've got the green parallel and then the missing nameplate and the silver. The second player in the team set is Matt Chapman, so on and so forth. And, and so I've got three sets – and I had to think so about sets, it. Your sets run vertically versus they would, horizontal. They would on this. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have all three of them for the players. So three players per page. You'll have three complete pockets because there'll be 27. And then Simeon alphabetically falls on his own page by himself. Um, but then here was the problem is I ended up with half the logo swap set. Well, what do you do now? And so my thought process was, well, shoot, if I end up going to get the logo swap set, which I did complete today, I'll do the first nine on a page by themselves and I'll stick that semi in one page before it with his three parallels. So he'll have four on that page. And I picked up a couple of the blue and the indigo. So, you know, I can end up filling out that page with just some random uh, inserts, but yeah, you've got to kind of visualize it in some cases, you know, inception, there were five team cards. So you get the base and then I got the green base uh, parallel. So it's two pages with eight, blank spots so if i pick up some of the other colored parallels i can always kind of just you know fill out those pages accordingly um but yeah it's it's frustrating and in most cases if you're going to put stuff in binders you're going to have to visualize it when you get the checklist especially if you want to pursue parallels how how many do i get you know am i going for donner's diamond king parallels of marcus simeon do i stop at nine and if I get 12, can I pull some of those into a team set? Like, again, we mentioned Independence Day, Baby Shark, 100. Those can end up with their overall team set. And it's going to thin out the additional parallels. So, How do you do um, it, Steph? 
Well, <clears throat> so I, I, I've actually been thinking about this just because I, I've been going through a lot of the stuff, the, the random stuff that I've set aside throughout the years and looking at, okay, so, and, and the worst thing is when you have like a 10 card team set or the base set ends after the second card on the page. Um, but what, what I've taken to recently is that every now and then they'll fill in a dummy card that has some information about the set or it's just a company logo or in years past, they would have the individual checklists on a dummy card itself. Kind of cool, but those can help fill a page very easily like these, for example. So if I have a 17 card team set for, 95 upper deck say this would go in the last three slots and it's a nice touch in that you know one it's an upper deck set but two it helps keep all the pages uniform in that they're all filled to the same brim and short of uh, the, the other idea that i saw online that i kind of liked was to take the complete set and then anything after that Put a parallel that you like, put an insert that you like, um, just to fill out the last few spots. Yeah. And, and I wish that the manufacturers would take it a little bit more into account. Uh, now, I, so, for example, like Tops uh, Series 1, ser Series 2, and Update. Yeah, I get that you, not every team can have exactly 33, uh, 27 cards, 36, etc. But... Um, you know, if you're looking at it and one's missing one, to put them on the tenth card, hey, may maybe work it around, do something. Yeah, yeah. Give them an extra insert. Yeah, so that, I mean, that's kind of why, like, I I don't in any of my sets, I'm not doing inserts. That's where I'm a little different. I'm just doing the 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 base set, and then, like I said, if there's like a, you know, like eighty-seven Donners had the opening day, or then they did like the mm -hmm. best of baseball. In 88 and 89 i've kind of put those in there but that's a full like team set there's you know 10 or 12 cards a piece and i just kind of blend them all they all are going to roll together uh there's no right or wrong way to do this no, um you know and hey bit on so i'm interested you said that the, you're going to crack all the 20 project 2020 mcguires that you buy right. now are you afraid that that's going to at some point you know cause any issues with the card not being in that uh, versus being in a page no, I mean, obviously, it, it's going to se severely uh, hurt the long-term resale value um, if, if that was ever something I would consider, which which it's not. So I don't really care. I, I crack clearly authentic and uh, archive signatures, ones I've picked up in the past, because I have no desire to keep it in a, in a one-touch that has a little tag over the top. Now, I've considered two things, you know, putting 18 of them, in uh, two pocket pages, you know, and, and, and since that'll fill it out and then choose two to go into a dual one touch next to an 87 Maguire rookie card. Or my other thought process is get 10 of the duels. And if I have somewhere where I can display them, just have two in each one touch side by side, but you'd have to have space. Um, I've got maybe seven or eight of those around the house with old Cespedes relics and, you know, they display nice, but they just, they're very, very, they take up a lot of real estate. So it's, it would have to be something I'd have to, to really think about if I can display them nice. But yeah, I've got no desire to keep these in there. That, no, my you know. question is, you see, you even put relics and um, autos and pages. And I can understand autos because usually they're a 35 or 55 point stock. But mm -hmm. are you putting, a, you know, a 130 point relic? Mm -hmm. 180 point yeah. relic in a page. What does that do to the page, to the, to the, the to integrity of the page long term? So I've got old, older uh, pages, and some of the ones you can find like at Walmart and Target are much more loose and, and have a lot more play in them uh, to put thicker. There are some that, that are just too thick to put in there. Um, I don't know if you remember, it was like 2012 tops had like the Silver Slugger and, and, Cy Young relics in there. I mean, those are super thick cards, um, but but ones that are 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 aren't too terribly thick do fit nicely in those those loose ones. 
Are you afraid of them ever coming loose and falling out, or like grabbing a binder and flipping through and having the card become? Not, no. And, and at the end of the day, you know, I, I know we, we look at these as collectible, and and, and it, to, to me, it's a hobby. You know, you know, it's if I ruined one due to to the way I chose to store it, that that's on me, right? Um. But no, I'm not. I'm not concerned about their, you know. And I, I look through them frequently enough to make sure that that you know if it ever looked like anything was going to have long term effects, um, the old pops chrome stuff like that, I would I would pull it and figure out a different way to store it. Okay. Uh, but as of right now, I don't have an issue. Here, just some interesting questions and uh, doing that. So to, uh, to that, I, I, I've personally noticed that uh, <clears throat> the the two or three players that I have, their cards that are slightly thicker do fall out, even with blue tape across the top. So I've resorted to the individual relics in order alphabetically. And then the uh, more famous players off on their own. So like Mono, Who? Kelly Brew. Who? <laughs> Did you just say the more famous players and say Justin Morno? Yeah. I bet I, I bet Brad, don't call me Greg Maddox Radke is in there too. No, I don't actually have any of his. But they're just too also, expensive. I mean they're just they're I mean when you start to get in their upper echelon, you just can't afford them. Yeah, and see, BCWs is different. They use, like, what, millimeters on theirs? I believe so. Yeah. Next time you're over, Tim, I'll show you how I, I binder those stuff. Um, show me the money. So we're going to hit D, uh, D's at G-Dub's cards again. Um, he, had, he put out a really interesting poll this week where he had 677 votes. People who say their PC is Acuna, Alonzo, Judge, Tatis, Vlad, Trout, Robert, Lamar Jackson, Don, uh, Doncic, Kira, etc. Keston here being one of them. Um, are they only in it for the money, or are they a valued hobby fam member? What say you to you guys? People that are cool, you know, when when you make a trade with somebody, like, hey, like, yeah, I'll trade you this Matt Chapman, you know, Heritage base card, and they go, well, who do you collect? And they're like, Mantle, Trout, Wilt Chamberlain, and Tom Brady rookies. Right, so it's that guy uh, or gal. Do you, are they in it for the money, or are they a valued member of our collective hobby? So, so uh, I I would say that they could possibly be a uh, valuable member if they'd only listed one. And yeah. you know that, like, uh, Card Drunk, he's a huge Braves fan. So you know that he has reasons for wanting to chase down Acuna and uh, Ozzy Albies. Um, but if they're just listing, hey, here are the top 10 guys that PSA said to submit, yeah. um, yeah, I'll, I'll look for someone else to make a trade. No, yeah, I mean, <laughs> if it's part of your established and well-documented PC, yeah, you're going to run into, I mean, let's think for a minute if Kyler Murray had stayed with baseball. Of course, I was going to want Murray stuff, right? Mm. Um, you know, but yeah, when you're naming the the who's who list, um, it doesn't mean you're not a valued member. There, there, there's got to be a little bit of a gray area there where you can be both. Yeah. But yeah, it's a it's a money. I mean, come on. That's why there's seventy percent of us said, you know, yeah. myself included, said you're in it for the money. Yes. Why else? Yeah. You're you're a speculator. So, Call it what it is. So, so Ben Ben linked it there. Yeah, seventy point six percent said only in it for the money. Uh, twenty nine point four said they're a valued member. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's a slight gray area in there. I can see if someone said, "Hey, I'm an Alonzo and Judge collector." If they lived in New York. But most or that are in New York, but most people in New York, you're either a Mets or Yankees. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. no like I'm Mets and Yankees. It's like there's no Yankee, there's no Giants A's fans. And if there are, you're full of shit because there's one you like more than the other because you can't, you don't like them both. Right. So um, a perfect example of that guy, and, I, and I'll pull it up here uh, as you guys finish it. Well, uh, there was Bryce, a guy I used to work with, Bryce Harper. Yeah. I'll, I'll compound once the image loads. Yeah, so um, there's a guy I used to work with who's like uh, – he was a diehard Denver Bronco fan, right? Always talked about the Broncos. And then the Patriots were in the Super Bowl, and he's rooting for the – because well, I'm also a Patriots fan. I'm like, hey, Jackhole, you yeah. can't be a Broncos fan and a Patriots fan. You know, you could be a Broncos fan and a New York Giants fan. You could be a Broncos fan and a Falcons fan. 
but you can't be a Broncos fan. That's like saying I'm a Broncos and a Raiders fan. Well, there's somebody that, that we've talked about before that I think we all follow on Twitter who's a Raider fan and a Steeler fan. It's like, how, how do how? how does that work? You know, it's, it's yeah, American League, National League, you want, you know, Eastern Conference, Western Conference, you want AFC, NFC, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. You can have a secondary team, but at the end of the day, you still have a favorite team. And everybody gives me shit, and you were one of them one time because I wore giant stuff to a card show or royal stuff to a card show one day. And later that night, we were at the card shop, and I had my giant stuff on because my dog got slobbered all over me. And you're like, well, how did you? And I was like, Man, I'm going to die. When they played in the World Series, I was with the Royals. Even though the Giants won the series, I was with the Royals. Anyway, here you go, Steph. What are we going to talk about? Here's the card. Bryce Harper. 2011 Bowman, the Chrome Prospects insert set. Played on Team USA 16U squad. Grew up rooting for the Dallas Cowboys, the Los Angeles Lakers, and the University of Texas football and Duke basketball. Yeah. Yeah. Complete homer. It's, it's like, dude, you're, you're literally. And Alabama yeah. football. Yeah. That was like LeBron James. Like, he was a Yankees fan. Um, you know, he he was like, it was like, like there, there was this there was this guy I worked with. His son was, was um, the guy's a huge, anything Pittsburgh. The Penguins, the Steelers, the Pirates. Those were his teams, mm -hmm. even though he lived out there. Never lived in Pittsburgh. His dad was from Pittsburgh. And his family, he had some family there. So that's why he was a Pittsburgh fan. His son was a was a Pittsburgh everything fan. But then all of a sudden, the Warriors started to win. So he became a Warriors fan, which is understandable because it's a local team that's doing well. Right? Well, then Aaron Judge happened. And then he was a Yankees fan. Right? And then he be, he left the Steelers to become who was it? Um, so you're just a championship fan then. Yeah, right? he, yeah, he was, and he he stayed with with Pittsburgh because they won those cups. So you know, and it, I forget who the football one was, but it was another jump the ship. Uh, you yeah, know, one people that that are are sheeps that like it's almost like the default setting on a video game. I am a Yankees, Cowboys, and Laker fan. You know. You're an asshole then, I, because those, I, yeah. those are the teams everybody hates. You see, right. it, it, and I've said this before. I'm a, I'm a Spurs fan when it comes to the NBA, and, and I'm also a Kings fan, not in a rooting interest, but in a city interest because that's where we're from, the hometown. And if the Kings do well, what that does is it increases. Uh, you know, if they were to go to the playoffs, right? Th there's more games for our 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 friends and family and neighbors that work for the team. To, to have an opportunity to work more games. They're getting paid for those games. The, mm -hmm. the downtown area is going to have more foot traffic on those nights. I want to see the Kings do well uh, for the community. Um, and, and I think it'd be healthy for our, our greater Sacramento area. Um, so I, I, I root for them to do well, but I'm never going to, you know, if it's the Spurs and the Kings, it's no contest. And unless the Spurs were eliminated, you know, this, you know, Spurs were before the NBA season got canceled. Were fighting for the eighth spot, as were the Kings. Didn't look like the Spurs were really going to be able to pull it off. But it's like, hey, if the, if the Spurs can't, I'd really like to see the Kings do it because it would be really good for our community. Um, but yeah, you're not going to catch me at all flying. You know, as a Raider fan, I'm not. I'm not flying Chiefs. I'm flying Broncos. You know, it's just come on, dude. How can you possibly do that? Yeah. So. So good for uh, Bryce Harper. Yeah, so we talked about uh, give, doing a giveaway here, um, and uh, it's real. It's a real simple giveaway. So we're going to do it very similar to what we did in the Hobby Hotline this week. But um, at, at Lost underscore Collector uh, was making these, and I, I bought one. Um, it's a 1987 wax pack wrapper bookmark. Now, I know not all of you probably can read or have books, but as you see behind me, I have quite a few books and i do enjoy reading uh so What's i bought wax pack half books i got a bunch read them no i haven't read them um but what happened was is he sent it to me and this happened like like three weeks ago and it didn't, never came and i told him like hey it didn't come because he asked me about it and he said he felt really bad and he's like i'm gonna send you another one I said, no give it a couple of days and it still didn't come so he shipped me a second one which which i got and the following day the original one came and it was because something happened to the, to uh, the envelope and shipping and they had to put it in a protective USPS envelope and, and send it to me. And so I have a second one and uh, 
we're going to give this away tonight. It's outstanding. He's doing coasters as well. Uh, and I picked up a set of four, and I'm going to have an 87, 88, 89, and 90 wax pack coasters here for my card room, which I'm excited to show you when those come in. He has to make them for me. Um, and he opened fresh packs, I think, of two of them for, for me just to make them for me. And I was like, dude, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, but those are the four big years I really hardcore collected. Um, I could have said 86, but really it was 87. And so I'm excited. So leave a, a positive comment in this week's show. And uh, what we'll do is now next week's show, I'll take all the names and we'll randomize them. And then we'll send this guy out uh, out to the winner. But just leave a positive comment about the show, whatever it is. Like, hey, you know, Ben's got cool blue headphones or, you know, I like Steph's Corona beard. Uh, whatever it happens to be, you know. So hit us up. Let us know. Um, we appreciate that. So pretty cool. I think they're awesome. A um, little piece of nostalgia. And I'm a huge, you know, I'm a big nerd for 87, right? So, no, never, never would have guessed. Yeah. So we'll finish out the show with the 87 background just because I find it. So and look at that. Steph is just looking straight on at Kirby Puckett. <laughs> he is. They're looking deep at him. Find, find, find somebody that, that looks at you the way that Kirby and Benito Steph look Santiago looks like he belongs on uh, Con Air. But they weren't the Kirby titties. Yeah, not Kirby titties. Like, you know, and Corey, Corey Snyder's over there looking like he's like in a – Catch someone's load or side on what's going on over there with uh, with good old Corey. So not Diago, not not Wade Boggs. Is that that Brad Radke? Is it? I mean, yeah, it, it, it's a Hall of Brad Famer. Radke. Is it the same pitch style? Huh. Same pitch. Style. I mean, oh, I guess it's Greg Maddox. I mean, they, one they, would never know. The way stuff saying, I mean, they both were right-handed pitchers. They are both white males, mm -hmm. uh, and they played in Major League Baseball. And had That's good all they they both had four letters in their first name, unless, you know, we go to Gregory and Bradley. Bradley, if that was his name. Guys, any final thoughts before we head out tonight? I I, I do. We're on the hobby. I'm on the hobby hotline this week. Um, you know, if, if, if you've got some extra time this week, you know, catch up on uh, let me get that photograph. Drew's got a great, great thing going over there with his show. Um, the Mike Summer, go to waxpackhero.com and check out his podcast. His tend to be uh, about 20 to 35 minutes, roughly, depending on his topic. Uh, I was listening to uh, our good buddy Trader Cracks, Ryan Cracknell from Beckett. Uh, mm -hmm. He had interviewed on him uh, with, with Mike a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Sports Card Nation, Mojo Breaks the Hype, um, Jim Beckett's uh, Sports Card Insights. So if you're looking for some other podcasts to listen, we have a lot of a lot of our friends, uh, you know, if you're into NASCAR, you know, NASCAR radio with a D, uh, Val Mars is over there. So um, a lot of good stuff on some other podcasts, too. I intend to use some of this downtime yeah, uh, to catch Eric, up on some old episodes. Yeah, Eric Norton was on this week, and he asked uh, – he ripped the audio from the Hobby Hotline because he hasn't put out a podcast under the Fat Packs uh, brand uh, since he was quarantined at home uh, and because he had to leave all of his equipment back at the office. So he put together a new deal, a little intro for it and took that information, you know, took that our podcast from the Hobby Hotline and put it under the Fat Packs brand as well. So give them a listen. Give him a listen as well. Uh, some good stuff there. Steph, anything else before we uh, we head out tonight? Uh, yeah, one. Uh, I, I want to say uh, props to Upper Deck and uh, congrats to Suze's friend uh, who used to uh, co-write on uh, a Cardboard Problems blog. Um, being a frontline emergency room nurse, uh, she's seems like she's going to be in Goodwin Japs. Oh, that's awesome! As a genuine hero. That's, that's awesome. Sweet. Amongst that. others that are being featured. Yeah, that's outstanding. That's super cool. Love that. Um, yeah, and I, I just want to say, hey, thanks to everybody for like I've made so many trades in the last three or four weeks to help finish out sets and I've helped other people. It's just been really fun. I mean, it takes us back to a virtual, basically a virtual, you know, old school card show to me, like back in the day, we'd go and trade stuff with, with guys we'd see. And so that's been a lot of fun. Um, I appreciate, keep sharing what you're, you're doing, like what you're pulling. I, I get a lot enjoyment of watching somebody else open some product and going through it or a mail day. Um, you know, cause I'm, I'm, I'm getting burnt out of watching Netflix a little bit and all the streaming services. I much rather see some, you know, some cards opened up and uh, and take a look. So I appreciate all that. Uh, remember, we're live every Wednesday 
at 8 p.m. Pacific. 10 Central. On all those channels. Make sure to subscribe and review our show on all platforms. We really appreciate it. Make sure to leave a positive comment on this week's show to be hmm. uh, put in the drawing for the Badass 87 Tops bookmark. And uh, follow us on Twitter about the cards. Follow Ben at our trading cards. Follow Stefan at Junk Wax Twins. Always follow me at Big Shep 79 Please share your hobby stories, great polls, and send your questions our way. Keep collecting, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>